Ladies and gentlemen, happy Wednesday. Let's get the conversation started, shall we? Would you please put your hands together wherever you are for Matt Hepburn and Kristen McGarry from Your Mates Brewing Company. Thank you very much. And Bernie Craven as well. Uh, Burn, we'll get to you in just a few moments, but you're from Waste Free Systems, BC. Great to have you on the couch. Um, there's a lot to get through tonight, guys, in relation to crafting a circular economy. But can we start with Matt and Kristen from Your Mates, which is where we are. Boys, thanks for having us home at your joint tonight. Cheers, sorry. It's always a pleasure to have you in the, in the brew house. Yes, and I promise you I won't leave tonight without sorting out the bar tab. Um, <laughs> Bernie, have you, my wallet's in the car, so I'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll work it out later. Yeah, it's yeah, dangerous. One from last week as well. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah that'd, that'd be really good. Um, um, boys, let's get together and have this conversation. I met you guys about six years ago, and in the last six years, the business has grown from you guys brewing beers for fun and sharing with your mates and your partners uh, in, in, a, uh, in a garage at the rental unit in Moffat, at Moffat Beach here on the Sunshine Coast. It's grown to what it is today. Within six years, it's incredible. Matty, how did, uh, how did the whole journey begin? Um, well, we're still for fun. We're still brewing for fun. I don't know how to brew beer, so I can't really stick to that uh, motto. But, um, I mean, it started, I was a, a project manager in construction and um, Christian was a school teacher and um, we didn't know each other for a bar of soap. Um, moved in with each other and I'd started working for my brother down at, at Drift. I wanted to learn, I want to go back to Mexico. I wanted to, you know, I was still in my youth. In those days, I think I was... 22 and just go back traveling and uh, moved in with Christian, started working at the bar and Christian, you know, he saw me coming home from these late nights, having a good time and he was, uh, I think you were teaching six-year-olds, so, um, you know, pouring, pouring beers and or teaching grade sixes. Um, so he quit his job and uh, we are just having a fat old time at the bar and this thing, craft beer, kind of popped up in, into uh, into our world, and um, I guess it wasn't just the flavour, but it was it was more so the people in the industry. Um, you know, we we're starting to meet owners of brewers, and um, you know, just we we started this beer club, and you know, I start, ended up having all my ex school teachers come to just drink beer with me, which was a little bit weird, but um, it was just a, a really good positive industry that. We would, it was, we would, we just kind of gravitated to, I guess, and. Uh, I think I think originally we had players over like a craft beer bar here on the Sunshine Coast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. We had too many mates who were doing the same thing. Yeah, yeah. We'd, All of our friends run bars, so we thought, well, okay, like well, rather than go you know, in competition with them, maybe we can uh, turn them into our customers. Um, yeah, let's and, let's and build a brewery. I think, yeah. I mean, that idea has been probably between mates that many times and I think it was a very similar set up what we're sitting on. Less comfy couch. Less comfy <laughs> couch. I think the, the middle table between the two couches was actually a Lazy Susan. Yes. Um, oh, the so we the best. Just put beer on and pass it around. Um, <laughs> so good, obviously. Um, and um, yeah, we thought, as we said, naively, could it be? We could, we could start our own brewery. Can't um, be that hard, you know. Brew beer, sell beer. We drink beer. We know a lot of beer drinkers. It's, you know, pretty simple. And we were absolute fools. <laughs> and as we say, though, if you pour it, they will come. Uh, life yeah, is yeah. way too short to drink bad beer. You guys have cornered the market with some incredible types of beer. Uh, what we will do is get to those in just a few moments, boys. But Matty, like you've continued to build this business on some incredible, amazing founding principles. Can you share some of those with us? Because it was it was about brewing good times, yeah. but also looking after the community, and you wanted to do it in a sustainable manner, and that's what's yeah, so yeah. good about it. Well, I think for us, you know, coming, we, we from having one staff member, now we've got, you know, over 20, 20 permanent staff. Um, we really try, it was a big growth period for us and we really wanted to have our staff to um, recognise and value what we value. So we kind of put three three phrases on it on down is first is mateship, the second is inclusivity, and the third is 
protecting our natural playground. You know, I've grown up on the Sunshine Coast and, you know, I, I really appreciate the, the natural wonders. Uh, you know, a lot of, I don't, I don't think people take for granted, but kind of forget that there's these areas around that, you know, is on our doorstep. And um, I've been very privileged to, to, to grow up in an, in an environment where I've been encouraged to go out and explore and, and enjoy these these amazing places. So, um, you know, with Christian, we made it a, an absolute detail in our business plan to make sure that, yes, obviously we need to try and survive and, and, and grow a business, but also give back to the community and give back to the environment that we build our business on. So, And you boys do so much stuff for charity. I've seen that firsthand. I've been to a lot of charity events. In fact, I just tell my wife that every time I'm here, it's a charity event. <laughs> and it's charity planning. Uh, I met a lovely lady yesterday. She's a bit of a legend, actually. You guys know her well. Jody from Reef Check Australia. Yes. You guys are ambassadors. How did that come about, McGarry? Um, so the guys at Reef Check um, are basically building a community of businesses that are looking after their playground and, and running their business in a sustainable way. So we had to tick a bunch of boxes to show that, yeah, we did care about the impact that our business is having on the environment, um, and they gave us a, a tick of approval from, from there. Um, I think Matt probably has a bit closer relationship with the guys at Reef Check. Yeah. Yeah. Joe, she is a legend. And when you talk yeah. to Joe, you, you know, yeah. she so passionate about, you know, especially this backyard being, I think they look after a lot of the southeast Queensland, but um, this uh, particular Majimba area, they survey the reefs and look at how much rubbish is going down. And, and straight away, as soon as we met her, um, they do the beach, the beach cleanups from... Um, Point Cartwright over a turtle um, hatching season, and I think that's what everyone forgets about. You know, you go down to the beach and it's clean, but it doesn't just magically happen. There, yeah. there is a lot of litter down there. Um, you know, you go up to Double Island Point and you look out of this, you know, amazing landscape. It's just dolphins and whales and turtles underneath and blue ocean. German backpackers <laughs> yeah. in the surf, learning to surf. It's amazing. And, um, you know, but unfortunately, sometimes if you actually dig a little deeper and you look around, there's, you know, crazy amounts of microplastic or there's, you know, glow sticks and, and lights and that are coming from the ocean, from the long liners or whatever it is. So organisations like Jody from Reef Check or, you know, Surf Rider or all these, there's so many out there that are really making steps forward to one, find out where the plastics are coming from and two, how can we stop those from uh, endangering our, our environment. So. Yeah, they're an amazing local charity, Reef Check Australia, and I believe the association you know, takes care of business along the reef from Port Douglas all the way to the Sunshine Coast. Yeah. I don't want to say too much. I filmed a video with Joe yesterday. Uh, two things came out of it. Old Woman Island, Majimba Island here on yeah. the Sunshine Coast, she rates as her favourite. But we all pretend that we don't have favourites. Uh, I say, I've got four kids, you boys know that. And I say, there's no favourites. There's Noah and not Noah times three. But the point is, <laughs> she just absolutely loves old woman and says yeah. the way we're looking after our coastline here on the sunny coast is to be commended. She also believes that there could be a Megalodon, Kristen McGarry. Yeah, so you've seen the movie Megalodon? Yes. It's a Megalodon with Jason Statham. She said that could be possible, but she didn't agree with that because there might be a Megalodon living somewhere in the world's oceans, that, that means the movie Megalodon is a documentary. It's, but, it's, it's, not, it's not an old woman island, is it? Because I'm, I'm a gym, I'm a gym for local now, and it's moved in there, and I'm not going in the water. We only just got yeah. him in the water, mate. We only just got him in there. <laughs> Yeah, Shark Bay. Um, <laughs> guys, it is Plastic Free July, and that's something that we're well into now. Uh, the Sunshine Coast Council is really pumping that through uh, everyone throughout the Sunshine Coast, and mm. especially media organisations and local businesses have gotten on board. You guys have done some amazing stuff with how you package up your takeaway cans or the cans that are, that are in the cartons. Maddie, talk us through that, because one of the big problems we had in the old days was when you get a six-pack of beer, the actual six-pack placky that kept all the beers together. Yes. Uh, we're doing something different at your mate's brewing. Yeah, and, um, you know, you, you look at this and it, it is plastic. Um, you know, there's there's no two words about it, but one, it is 100% recycled plastic, and two, it's 100% re reusable. So for, for us and, and any, any brewery really is the fact that you can reuse anything is amazing. So um, what the boys do, what, what we do is um, try and encourage um, the reuse of these pack tech. Um, so what we've done, 
is we're setting up, uh, currently setting up, it's, it's technology is seems simple, it's a lot harder, but we're bringing out these membership cards and uh, we will be trying to incentivize, because it's all good to say, hey, drop drop these in, we'll reuse them, save the environment. Um, but what we want to do is take it that a step further. Um, and I'll, I guess we'll, sh we'll show it on the camera, but- It's a it, bit like cash for cans, isn't it? The, cash for cans, 100%. The they they community. stick in, this. They, we'll reuse these 100 times over. Um, so you take it off, most people chuck it away. For us, we'll just reuse that. 100%. So, so we want people to bring them back. Yes. It's, yeah, it's, we've, always, we've always had the little collection points, the drop-off points with, with no incentive at all and people bring them back. And we're always surprised and, and it really lights us up to see how much... People bring in stacks, mate. If you, if you offer a place for people to to do good and, and, and to recycle and see that we're reusing it, they will, they will use it. Um, Especially if the reward is beers. Well, that's where we're going to take a step yes. one, one inch further and, and really try and get everyone on board and, and offer something for the people who are going to bring back those back to And I have one of these cards already. It's a prototype, and I can tell you, everybody, it's made for 100% recyclable plastic. Is it made from a... <laughs> <laughs> right, we'll talk about that later. Side note. Uh, <laughs> I want to talk more about beers with you guys and what your plans are for the future. Uh, and we talk about crafting a circular economy. Me. There's nothing goes to waste here at your mates brewing. It doesn't at all. In fact, I was here two weeks ago and I bumped into Jeremy, who's a cattle farmer from Kim Kim. We'll get to his story in a minute. Uh, but there's spent grain once you've done the brewing process. And McGarry will explain that further a little bit later on. But that gets fed to cattle. And then it gets, you know, you know, there's nothing goes to waste at all. Bernie Craven, let's go to you for a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, Bernie Craven, you're an incredible man. I'm just going to read this to the people. Bernie, former hairdresser, but once you're a hairdresser and a stylist and a barber, you're always to, yeah. Um, you are a circular economy innovator. You've identified an opportunity to take, to take plastics and other waste from hairdressing salons and wait for it, create prosthetic limbs for children in need around the world. Bernie Craven, I'll put it to you. The work you're doing makes Mother Teresa herself look like someone's cranky old man. Like you, it's, it's incredible what you're doing, mate. Tell us about yourself, your business, and how this all came about. Well, I suppose uh, my life as a circular uh, economy type person was I, I wanted nine kids. So I, I've had hand-me-downs my whole life. You know, when I, when I, so everything's been reused in my family. And then my dad was one of these people that the hard rubbish collection had come out around the surrounding suburb, you know, for where all yeah, everyone wanted the stuff they didn't want to use. And uh, my dad would drive us around on the weekend and I was the only one that would go with him. And we'd take stuff out of the bins and take it home and we'd sort of reuse stuff and remake it. So that to me is... Um, it's sort of how I grew up. So it, it's sort of nearly like ingrained into me. It's a bit like living on, working on a farm and you know, it's ingrained into you like that lifestyle. So, um, and then uh, from, from there I sort of went on. Actually, I, I started life as a plumber, um, as a plumbing apprentice and uh, I just uh, didn't like the guy I was working for. So, and, and this mate of mine sort of said to me, you know, I've got a mate that's a hairdresser and uh, he reckons there's plenty of women and plenty of money. So, <laughs> so I thought, that's the life for me. So then I tried to find uh, a, you know, uh, a, a hairdressing salon to give me a job. And I ended up getting a job at the biggest hairdressing salon in Melbourne. So there were like 22 on the staff, 28 chairs in the salon. And it was a really great way to learn your craft. But it was also where I became very aware of like all of the, the sort of waste that comes through a hairdressing culture. Sure. It, was, it was massive. Mm. So then um, I worked there, I finished my craft, and then I went travelling overseas with my wife who's here tonight. So we were only in our early 20s, and uh, we travelled the world for two and a half years. We went across the Sahara on a motorbike, we got married in Rome, we did all sorts of stuff. But while I was on that sort of journey, you know, I, I kept on noticing, like, all of this, um, you know, waste, particularly in the, the sort of Asian countries and that sort of stuff. So, for me, it was uh, it's something that I've always had my eye on. Uh, so when I came back, I started my own salon, and uh, I've always been an environmental hairdresser. So I always separated my waste, and uh, we created new tap heads to, to use less water in the salon. And I've always had buckets for the chemicals so they didn't go down the sink, and that was just stuff I did automatically. 
because uh, and you're I, an environmental warrior. Yeah, sort of. And you know, I'm you know, I've always been really you know, I've got three daughters, and when you're in the house, it used to be lit up like a bloody Christmas tree. And, <laughs> and so I'm always sort of like switches off everywhere and everything. So it, it just sort of ingrained in me, you know. And um, so anyway, with that first salon, uh, we become very successful. And uh, and we and and but we we're always I was always had a mind about the environmental footprint that 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 we were creating. So anyway, we decided we'd move up to the Sunshine Coast 25 years ago with our three daughters, and um, because you know this is uh, I just thought we want we wanted something better for them as a lifestyle, you know, and what what sort of better place for the Sunshine Coast? Close to the beaches, they all went to nippers, you know, and all that sort of stuff, and. Um, and I, I really enjoyed the lifestyle there. Um, I started another salon in Calandria, which is more successful than my Melbourne salon. And, um, but still with the same um, vision, you know, that, that, that we minimised our, our sort of footprint. And um, so I sold that about, I don't know, eight years ago. And I did a bit of, I started up an online training business because I did lots of education around the world and um, for product companies and things like that you know, fashion weeks and all of that, which is really sort of cool. Um, and then I, I sort of sold it and I, I started up this online training. I was years ahead of my time. Facebook Live wasn't going then. So I thought, all right, um, you know, I, I wasn't doing as well out of it as I thought. So, and I started again, then I thought, you know, I was watching what was happening with, um, you know, the whole environment around, um, you know, they didn't call it circular economy then, they called it, you know, but uh, sustainability. So I thought, all right, I, this, but why don't I do something about it, you know? So I thought I'm going to build a company from the ground up. And uh, I know the industry, I know the waste streams, and I, I developed a whole sort of smart bin system to separate waste. Um, I, 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 I was well known in the industry, I had started up a a charity and we were doing sort of you know teaching hair cutting you know over in uh, Southeast Asian countries for quite a few years and teaching people how to do hairdressing and I and when I was over there we uh, we worked in this area that was it was called the we called the, the rubbish dump area it was a hill as big as Bundy and it was it was just rubbish and there were 300,000 families living around the bottom of it and, and I just looked, and there were these guys standing in the the, low, the stream, which looked it, the, the colour of the water was just really murky. These young guys were standing there all day washing plastic that got dumped there, and then they were bundling it up into fifty kilo packs, and they were then selling it for a few cents, and that's what they were, that's how they were making their money. And I just thought, you know, this is just horrific. And so mm -hmm. that's when I, you know, uh, then it's when I thought, all right, I really have to get serious about this. So. Well, this is when you became a clean tech innovator. Yeah. That's the phrase, isn't it? The yeah, yeah. And I suppose, um, you know, then, so then it was like, um, so very much it's, you know, I deal with all sorts of waste from headless and so on, but plastics was the one thing that's a worldwide problem. You know, it's it like, they've only just, it's only just become apparent because they were, when they were with the aerial shot, satellite pictures of, of the, the plastic that was on the beaches and everything around the world, mm. and all the islands and that, they were saying, they were estimating it was um, a certain amount, and now, um, actually they're finding out that it's six inches deep. So now they're saying it's actually three times that amount. Every bit of plastic that has been made is still here. Um, don't get me started on biodegradable because yeah. <laughs> what biodegradable means is it's a, it actually breaks down into a tiny little pieces yeah, you know, yeah. in the ground. So, but anyway, uh, yeah. So that's that's where I sort of got on to. Um, I thought, all right, well, uh, I'm a solutions driven person, and um, so um, how can plastic be reused? And uh, so. I, I, had, I didn't know anything about plastic. Um, yeah, I was an absolute novice. So I went, uh, you know, Google is fantastic. <laughs> it's where I get all most of my ideas from. So I went looking and I found um, a uh, sort of charity called Enable, uh, which make, you know, the 3D printing prosthetics. Um, well, this is the story that's yeah, so yeah. incredible, boys. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's amazing. So, so 3D printing prosthetics um, around uh, you know, around the world, which is fantastic. So I thought, oh, wow, that's really good. So I connected with those guys. 
and then um, and, I, and then but what I and when I started so then I, so then I had to learn about 3D printing because I didn't know anything about that as well. So then I uh, I started to learn about 3D printing. So I've got I've got a couple of 3D printers and I started to learn all about that. 3D printing community is fantastic because they're so welcoming. Even if you sound like a dickhead, they'll still answer your questions. You know, like yeah, how yeah, do yeah. I do this? You know, they go it's like duh, and they just say, yeah. yeah, mate, you just do this, this, and this. And I wasn't interested in making some little, you know, figurine or something like that. I thought if I'm going to do something, it's got to be for a reason, you know. And something hugely significant. Yeah. So, and anyway, but they'd have a lot of failed prints, and they were crushing the prints up, and then, and then turning it with an extruder back into filament, which you use in the 3D printing machines. So I thought, all right, why can't you do that with recycled plastic? So I started to take the plastic bottles that I was collecting. Um, I, I've got the basic sort of gear. Um, I've now got a plastic shredder at the warehouse. Um, so we, 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 we sort of we sort it all uh, in the warehouse. It comes back, we sort it into all the different categories. Uh, and then we, we clean it, uh, we put it through the shredder and turn it into sort of tiny little shredded pieces. We put it in the extruder and we start and we create three d filament with it. So um, there were, we got a lot of media last year. Everyone from the project to Today Show, you name it, we got it. We had all the politicians, Leanne Enoch, um, David Christopher, like, no one wants to give you money, but they all want to come and get the story. You know, so. <laughs> and shake your hand and have a shake photo. Hand, take, 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 <laughs> yeah. you know, so we, we've had, you know, we've, we've had, you know, worldwide press, you know, you, National Geographic kids and the lot. So, but uh, so it's, it sort of got it out there that, about what we were doing, and um, so then you know, next thing I had, I had uh, University of Technology Sydney. They rang me and said, "Look, they've got a Rapido Social. They're engineering sort of socially minded type department. So they uh, we got a small grant, and they were testing plastics for me." Uh, um, Sunshine Coast Uni uh, had a student there who was interned with you know testing plastic. So. We've been, you know, working now. And we're, we're really in that testing phase. So, the, the prosthetic or assistive devices that we've been making, um, like, they're not totally made out of recycled plastic yet. But that's where we're going with it. You know. Well, that's the plan. That's the vision, that's isn't it, for waste-free systems? And, um, mm. and I want, I want to look. I want to be able to create them so that. You know, at the moment we're giving them away for kids for free, and we've got a couple of recipients. Um, I'm, actually, I've also been invited onto the Bionics uh, Queensland Challenge at the moment. I mean, I'm not doing much. I'm just putting a little bit in there. We've got all of these like really professional people. I'm the only non-science person in there, but I'm putting my bid in <laughs> because I'm on the ground and I know what you know how things are working. So that's sort of really great. And we're actually in the semi-finals with that, which is which is really fantastic. So. But yeah, and, and tomorrow night I'm I'm um, I'm actually on the on the panel um, University of Technology Sydney. They're, they're actually um, doing a, a in their proto space. They've got 30 teams uh, doing this 3D printed projects for um, uh, sustainability. So you know I, I'm now getting this collaboration happening where people are helping me move forward. So. And that's, um, and that's, you know, so we've, we've developed this circular economy with the businesses that are involved with us. And, um, and they come on board because they like what we're doing. And it's just, it's just like you guys. It's, it's sort of, we're trying to create a culture. So, you know, um, I don't want everybody on board. <laughs> I, I want the people who care on board. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, yeah. What we, that's what we're getting. It's just like your culture here. You want people that like what you do. And, and it's exactly the same for me. I, you know, businesses that come to us, you know, they ring up and they go, we actually really like what you do. We want to actually be part of that. That's how we grow. And so the more businesses we get on board, the more of that technology we can actually do. And, and all of the extra little bits that sort of add in there um, just help us on our way, you know. I mean, I'm totally self-funded with everything we do. Um, but I just do it because, you know, I, I, I enjoy it. And I'm well, You're a game changer, Bernie Craven. I mean, when I, when I look around the three of us, I don't want to say too much about my beard because I know with a bit of ginger and a bit of ash blonde, it looks like a possum set up shop on my face tonight. But 
I mean, you are the only guy without a beard, but you're a stylish guy. So is that sending a message of beards out? I'm maybe? sure he's. I'm sure he's trimmed a few beards in his time. Though. You would have. I have trimmed a few beards, and I have actually a qualified barber as well as a hairdresser. So you know, I did that in the early days. But could you're... you wax my back? No, that's a personal <laughs> no, no, question no, for later. No, I wouldn't do that because you know, um, I've got, there's no reuse for the actual wax <laughs> of the hair. It's bodily fluid. You can't do anything with it. Of course. Of the beard. Sorry, mate. The natural body oils and the well, you know the story, Bernie Craven. If your dad doesn't have a beard. You got two mums, but we'll move on okay, from that. Already, yeah, we'll we, we do want to talk about whether the mullet is back. That's a, more of a, a hair fashion type thing. You are a serial collaborator, mate. What you're doing, as I said before, we don't throw a game changer around, you know, willy nilly in these conversations. You are a central, uh, an essential part of crafting a circular economy here on the Sunshine Coast. The lads from your mates are also serial collaborators. You guys get involved in so much stuff. I did mention earlier, I uh, bumped into Jeremy in the main driveway here in Morana at Technology Drive, uh, which by the way is just up the road from the bottle community. So you can do some recycling there and help out. Yes. Uh, my daughter's doing that at the moment. She's trying to get a surf, rip surf. It's like a really cool ripstick. But anyway, we're saving up for that. Um, but you guys have been doing some incredible things. And when you brew the beers, we talked to the master brewer, Kristen McGarry. When you brew that, there's nothing left. Nothing goes to waste really, does it, mate? Including the spent grain. No. No, definitely so if you look at these uh, tanks behind us and 4,000 litre tank we have about 2 kilos of yeast about 20 kilos of hops um, and then about 700 kilos of hops malted barley so hang on, is this a recipe to make, Larry? Because I'm going to write it down. Because you're quite secretive of it. Yeah, yeah. Carlos, can you write that down, mate? 700 <laughs> K. Yeah, we'll get to that later. That's the IP. And that's, that's the biggest um, product that we have. So we extract all the sugar from the grain, and that's what the yeast consumes to uh, produce the alcohol and the CO2. Um, and that needs a place to go. Um, and luckily, it is like caviar for cattle, pigs, um, sheep, any kind of farm, any kind of farm animals. Uh, we have three uh, farm, local farmers that we um, side stream um, that grain to. And um, when the truck turns up at the farm, the cows come running. They absolutely love the stuff. Um, and so the farmers uh, are more than happy to come down here and take the grain off their hands. Um, we need to get rid of it. It, it turns really quickly and stink up the whole um, brewery if it's not on site. Quick spark. Um, and then we actually have these um, cattle farmers with, with cattle with, with your mate's brew house's name on it. So um, we're looking to actually bring some of that meat back into the brewery um, instead of just buying it from our local butcher and meat suppliers that we can actually feed the cattle um, that we then feed to our customers. Well, when I met Jeremy a couple of weeks ago uh, in the driveway here at Your Mates, uh, he's the, the, the cattle farmer from Kin Kid, and he, he just told me the whole thing. He goes, mate, my cattle just lap this stuff up. They love it. And suddenly I was thinking, when we talk about Larry too, Larry is the, the Larry Pale Ale, which has really made Your Mates Brewing famous. Uh, I'm going to say around the galaxy. I'm just going to say that, boys. Like, from the lads who started six years ago brewing beers for fun and good times with mates in the garage at Moffat Beach to, you know, there are uh, bottle shops in Perth, you know, all over Australia who are just desperate to get the beers. But I was saying, if you're feeding this to the cattle, Larry Pale Ale infused T-bones. I can't think of anything better, oh, to be honest. And Matty, you've had some of the T-bones. Yeah, Jezza dropped a couple of T-bones off. He dropped some uh, corn meat off as well, which the boys have just started uh, banging out some uh, house-made pastrami, which is oh. top notch on, on our new room. And um, so, yeah, I mean, you can't really get much better than that is, you know, giving something and then having it come back to, to, to the house is, um, yeah, it's something pretty special. And um, I think that's what we're all, I'm trying, I am trying to convince McGarry that we've got these, this is the next level. This is it, my next project. I don't brew the beer, I've, I just come up with these crazy ideas, but we got all these, these the grain bags. So 700 kilos goes, how many grain bags goes into a 700 kilo bag? It's a kilo per bag, so yeah. We <laughs> Seven times four, two, 210 bar, is it? No, 210? It's four per 100, so four <laughs> times seven. <laughs> yes. let, let, let the extra be, be 21, yeah. 21. Yeah. I'm not right. real smart like that, but I've got a ute and I can help you lift heavy stuff <laughs> on the weekends. But yeah, we, we can have, so that's just one batch. 
actually, no, we can have up to... There's hundreds of One and a half to two ton, you know, almost a hundred bags of, of really strong um, material um, that we're, we're actually looking for someone to take those off our hands. I, I take them home and use them as bin bags, but we don't grab that much. You don't have a baby yet either. Oh, yeah. no, the baby <laughs> dog is... So, so that's the next step, McGarry. That's the next step. So we have taken them up the beach before and used them as clean-up bags. Um, so last time we rejected uh, clean-up of point cart, right? We used them there. Um, they're, they're, we just want to see another use for them. Um, mm. and, and that's the thing with our business. Like, it's just been growing so quickly and so constantly. Like, we have to just take a step back and, and focus on small... Projects. So, you know, the grain is a project. Um, the next project we'd like to do are the grain bags. We'd like to look at the water as well. Like we already recycle and bring the, the water that we use to cool down the beer becomes the water that we use in the next batch. Um, and we just put um, a big solar system up on the roof. I was about to say, renewable energy, you've just whirled a huge solar system, which is perfect right here on, on the brew house. You just put that up on the roof. Yeah, 100 kilowatts up here. So the whole brew house during the day is off the grid and we're actually pumping stuff back into the grid, which is just an amazing thing for us to have achieved. And mm. it's um, a project that we've, we've been dreaming about for so long um, and, and we're so excited. We've got it up on the screen in the brew house. You can see how much the soul is producing, how much we're using, and then how much is going back into the grid. And, um, it's really cool. We're even pretty excited for summertime when this shed gets quite hot. Um, <laughs> hope we get some of that sun off the roof. And, uh, Makes people drink quicker, though. Hopefully make it a little bit cooler in here. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, just touching back, like with the bags, and which you know, it goes back to what Bernie's like, what you're bringing up about the collaboration aspects. You know, where we can't solve all the problems, so that's what we're kind of reaching out is who has a use of this of this product? You know, who has a use for this plastic, or who has a? There has to be people out there, and there has to be some kind of infrastructure that is out there. You know, where like. Google is awesome, but um, you know there has to be something that these byproducts of, of uh, you know of manufacturing or, or, or business there has to be something, some kind of business or some kind of bright-minded individual that has a use for it and a constructive use that you know whether it turns a profit or not is is sustainable uh, and can can fund its itself because um, you know that's where we fall down as a you know as an economy we're always pushing forward for for uh, you know for profit but in the end it's going to help the environment you know we did have about 2000 bags up upstairs and I was I had a use for them and but with, uh, sack races well, the, 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 the little bits of grain wasn't helping out with any kind of vermin problems that we, that we don't have in this facility. Um, so, you know, we had to throw them out. And it was a real, really big shame for, for me to personally do that. So, um, you know, if someone has an idea, I'll start collecting again. And, um, yeah, I'm sure, yeah. That's, there's little projects like that that it has to come back to collaboration because in the end, we try our best to be sustainable in our business. You know, no plastic straws, that, that's it. Easy. Take the straws away. No, you know, like grow up. You don't get a, you know, you have a cardboard straw. But these are kind of bigger projects that we re we, we would really like to tackle. But we just need some help. Well, and, and the thing is, Matty Hepburn, from your mates, this is part of, of the conversation that we're having that the council has you know, put on for us, and that's why we're here tonight. It's all about crafting that circular economy, and in particular, with a sustainable reduce, reuse, recycle. I mean, we've been saying this for 10, 15 years. The man that you've met tonight, Bernie Craven, is the perfect partner, I reckon, to help you, because he's a serial collaborator, we've established that, mm. to help you guys move into that next level. Bernie, you would know people. Is there anyone in particular, Bernie Craven from Waste Free uh, Systems, that you would give a shout out to while, while we're live across the galaxy on the World well, Wide Web? Uh, well, someone who I've just been doing a little bit of collaboration with is No Top Surfboards, which you can see out the back there. And so, Louise from No Tops, we have been in discussions uh, of late because uh, they're sustainable surfboards. Oh, how good is uh, Louise? Louise yeah. Tops. Awesome. And uh, so, you know, and uh, the way they're making the boards is sort of fantastic, you know. So I'm 
I'm now looking at you know the whole process, and I'm happy to actually start to sort of look at your bags and go, all right, what can we do there? And um, because um, I'm looking and going, all right, well, uh, you know, they have a specific rating they have to keep. Sustainability, so and they need sort of solutions, and so I'm looking at it at the moment. Um, we've got flax, to, you know, flax material to, to decide what to do. I've got a bit of a solution for that, I think, and they're plastic. So I've got a plastic guy in Brisbane. So, what about pants? What about fashion? Can we with the boys' bags? Is there some sort of cool fashion? Remember hammer pants from the 90s? <laughs> you can't touch this. And then uh, parasilk material. Uh, you, you remember, remember John they, Howard used to wear that stuff? I may not remember, but they used to make these uh, shoes with the, the soles of the shoes with old tyres. Yeah, right. I can't remember the name of them. But anyway. Um, that is brilliant. You might be able to turn them into a shoe. Who knows? I mean, you don't know. But you're the man to, to point the boys in the right direction. And, and this is part of that collaboration. And again, crafting the circular economy and getting the conversation started, Burn. Yeah, mm. yeah I mean, I, I, I just, um, I'm happy. We can to storm at your place, place, can't we? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My warehouse is like a tiny comparison to yours. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's, yeah, we'll talk about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like Over a couple of beers. Yeah, yeah. Um, a poignant question to ask the master brewer from your mate's brewing company, Chris and McGarry. Uh, mate, because you're, so, you're self-taught. I mean, you've gone and learnt from some of the masters. There was the incredible German brewer. There was it just... Was it inland? Was it was it west Creek, of, of, yeah. of Vegas? Bert from Battle Creek. Yeah, Bert. Now, you, now because we're live and it's a bit of a family thing, you can't tell the entire story. And there's still that legal thing with me, with Bertie. But apart from that, Bert from Battle Creek, you did learn from him as a, as a bit of a master, but otherwise you're self-taught. Oh, I mean, like, yeah, it's it's been a hard slog just trying to learn as much as I can from as many places as I can. Um, I love the parallels. thing too about all of you guys getting together is you know you would say every other brewery here on the Sunshine Coast and by the way wherever you are in Australia tune in right now come and join us come and visit us unless you're from Victoria but we'd love to have you back when that's going to be okay <laughs> that's all point yeah. isn't it uh, but yeah come and join us because we've got some great things to show you as far as our beautiful Sunshine Coast goes but a lot of the, the breweries pretty much all of them have the same mentality that we have here at your mates and that's how do we brew better beer how do we get people involved and the good thing about this is it's a really it's a cool product with a really great message as well you know it's it's about the sustainability and about promoting you know great environmental practices people who come and drink beers here they're environmental warriors they start recycling their environmental warriors um, we got a few questions from you so thank you very much for getting involved um, we might just quickly have a look at uh, plastic free july because the boys are doing a heap of stuff Burn, we've got some more suggestions from you as well. But uh, we want to recognise some of our local single-use plastic-free solution innovation champions. And we've got a stack of them on the Sunshine Coast. These people are actively creating opportunities for folk to avoid single-use plastics or to create circular solutions for would-be waste products. Um, Kelly Lavery from Struck It. Now, Kel was last year's 2019 Sunshine Coast Business Women's Network winner, the Sustainable Businesswoman of the Year. So well done to you, Kel Lavery. Uh, we'd like to give you a tip of the hat. Also, Sam Spunner, Sammy from Sinchies. Uh, she won the exact same award in 2015 for the uh, Sustainable Businesswoman of the Year. Ellie DeGrave from Go For Zero was the, uh, she was a finalist last year in 2019. So well done, Ellie. And a great long-term local circular economy solutions champion is our mate Helen Andrews uh, and her community sharing marketplace platform, 
called Spare Harvest. So Google Spare Harvest and get around it. This is what the conversation's about. We're trying to say, hey, can you come and help us craft a circular economy? We've got some great questions, boys. Can I get these out? These are from the people watching Bring it on. around the globe, just here on the Sunshine Coast. Uh, question from Gillian, or it could be pronounced Gillian. So but either way, uh, Gillian, she says, can the grain bags be used for prosthetic limbs? Bernie Craven, you're the guy to answer that one. Well, that's all I find it would be made of, I can't answer that. It's quite, it's like a, it's a, it's got two layers. It's well, a flaxy it, outside yeah, and a, a soft plastic inside. Yeah. I would say um, possibly not. It, it's got to be a specific type of material. So. But worth the investigation. Worth the investigation, yeah. yeah. And Gillian, brilliant. So thank you. Gillian may end up picking up 100 bucks Thanks to spend here. Thanks for the question. It's a great question. Of course, we want you to also get involved. And if you yourself are doing something amazing on the Sunshine Coast as far as recycling and sustainability, let us know. Or if you want to job in a mate, like even if it's your neighbour or something, your neighbour, Bernie Craven, loves you. What are you, what are you doing to help out your neighbour? There's a bloke next door and he just loves everything you're doing. He's very supportive. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know. That's what the girls told me earlier. <laughs> he does, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And mullets, mate. Are they back business? Business up front, party down the back. I mean, you're a hairstylist. I've never had a real problem with mullets. You know, in fact, um, I used to cut a lot of them years ago because I was into some quite experimental sort of stuff. But um, yeah, I don't have an issue with mullets. I think you know, if you if you want to wear it as an individual, go for it. Nothing like the mule. I think it's um, another question here too. This is to uh, the master brewer McGarry from your mates. Do you have to have a rockin' beard to be a, uh, a brewer? Is it because most brewers? Well, McGarry's a brewer. And he doesn't have a rockin' beard. Right, it might not be. It might not be a real question. All right, um, but yours is one colour, and you need to hold on to that. In fact, Matty Hepburn, yours is the same. I don't think my beard anything special, but I've just had it for a very long time. I haven't seen his chin before. No, there's only a couple of people on the Sunshine Coast who have seen his chin. There's rumours going around about it. The other guys I went to high school with. Uh, I think actually, actually, there's only one guy. Yeah, right. Dad, so only a couple of people have seen your nude nut here yeah, with that. Yeah, the... I went to high school with, and his dad, Stan, who actually comes down here every uh, week and helps us on that. That's the real story. We're bringing bloody retirees out and, yeah. and giving them something to do. Nice. <laughs> I like it. So, uh, packaging or packaging, 100 dollars of bags of beer every week. Um, and it started off with, with Peppy's dad, Gary, and a couple of his friends. Gazza. Shout out to Gazza. Shout out to Gazza. Well, it was all the school teachers. And the Pack and Our Boys. Uh, Pack and Our Boys. It's evolved into now. It's got its own Facebook group page. It's a beer economy. Yeah, yeah, yeah circular. Uh, it's circular beer economy. Beer economy. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, and it gets better than like, truly get out of the house anyway, but they love coming out here and having a yarn, and um, it just has a great atmosphere. The great thing too, Chris and McGarry, is what you boys have created here for the pack out boys, for the lads, uh, is an extension of the men's shed. Really, because well, there's a lot well, of chat going on. It is on. girls, as mum's joined in. There is a Mum's yes. getting lonely at home. Oh, and yeah. The bloke chat tends yeah, to go man. a bit lower. She would be here, absolutely devastated if she didn't get a mention. So it's now the pack out crew, not the pack the out, pack out boys. crew. Yeah. And that's, so your mum, Mama Leanne? Mum and her mate. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they'll, they'll argue that efficiency is definitely up. Back girls. Are it totally would be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, it totally would be. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you think back to the birth of, of the Son of God, I mean, had it been three wise women instead of three wise men, you know, <laughs> the three wise men were almost late for the birth because they didn't stop and ask directions. And they bought really crap gifts, apart from gold, the frankincense and the, You know, at least the ladies would have brought a casserole and some good advice <laughs> from Mayor's Mary. Well, we, so. can't, we can't put the cans and drop onto the ground accidentally <laughs> the oh the boys so when the guys are in there a lot more of the cans accidentally get dropped shop soil yeah, yeah. another question for you guys uh, I'm not sure who this has come from but thanks guys could do a call out for hairdressing salon um, for other salons here on the Sunshine Coast how do they get involved well uh, they just need to go to our uh, website uh, wastefulsystems.com 
Yeah, and they'll, and they'll get me. They can just ring the number and get me. Um, so you are your people. It's not like getting their people to call my people. Yeah, yeah, you are yeah, your people. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, uh, I'm the guy that deals with everything direct. Uh, I mean, look, we, you know, we service right from Gimby to the Gold Coast. So, and, uh, and we've got a growing band of uh, yeah, sell on owners that, yeah, they really want to be part of it. They love it. Uh, they love what we're doing. And we, we just sort of include them in it, you know. So I'm sure there's plenty of them watching tonight. So I couldn't allow that. Excellent. And are you looking for any other specific waste products that you can uh, yeah, turn your hand well, to? Look, I, I am. I mean, we're, I've got, look, I've, I've got uh, like the guys here, I've got plans for the future. I mean, COVID sort of put back a few things, but we've got a, I've got a, a certification program, green certification program that we're looking at launching, um, and a pretty huge one next year, which we're hoping to be a global thing. So, is there is there like a, a residential like at home thing that you know just everyday people can be well, we, you know, using? Um, we're, yeah, lots of ideas out there, and we're and we're really sort of uh, nutting a few things out at the moment. There's a few things that have come along lately that I'm looking at. I'm quite excited about that. We got that's where we're going to move. So yeah, so, yeah from sell on owners, they can just ring me direct, and uh, yeah, we we uh, we've got a great community but just as I said growing and yeah, really enjoying it. Is there any opportunity, any room, this is another question that's come in, uh, for a partnership, a collab between barbers and beer makers? Um, so you cut our hair and we'll pay you in beer or no, but you I know. Think, I think we're definitely going to. That's my barber. Oh, yeah, yeah. What I'm paying for haircuts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. It's a beer economy, as we say. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah I, beer economy, yeah. I can't, no, I can't get a mullet anymore, though. We did, well, we did have long hair one day. So you can, you've sort of got a reverse mullet, though, haven't you? Yes. Oh, so, yeah. I mean, if you actually turned yourself upside down, it would start to look like a mullet. Well, there's a party in there somewhere. Yeah. There is, totally. <laughs> no, I'm not. I just wanted to know about uh, Morlays, as we call them. I think, you know, probably you wouldn't, but I think you would, Todd. If you turn you upside down, I think you'd be looking at the first mullet as well. It would be like our old ex-AFL footballer, Dermot Brereton, even, because there's a bit of curl. There's a bit of curl in in uh, in my beard. Uh, I'm getting handed a few bits and pieces. We've got one more question. Livingsmartqld.com.au. Please go to that website tonight as well, everybody. Uh, the team at Sunny Coast Living smart are encouraging us in plastic free july to get our kit on and by that we mean a plastic free kit what are you doing when you go to work uh you know you're not using glad wrap how you're packing your lunch when you head to the beach all those sorts of things but the website's really important please have a look at it sometime tonight i'm not the boss of you so maybe you could do it tomorrow it's up to you but livingsmartqld.com.au and just by going on the website um, leaving your details and getting involved we could be sending you while watching with your family how good is that yeah. Again, involved in the environment, in, involving uh, local Malulabar tour operators, crafting a circular economy. Uh, another one here, question from Jono, and we're just about to wrap up, everyone. John says, I've seen some breweries using cardboard uh, pack tech. Is this something that you've considered doing? I think you know a little bit more about the cardboard. Uh, yeah, we've looked into it, um, and well, we, did, we just didn't see a significant benefit from the cardboard. You know, Recycled and reusable. Yeah, um, mm. It's yeah, a work in progress, though, isn't I mean, it? I'm, mm. I'm impressed with that. Really, I love where you're going with it. Um, and ultimately, yeah, if, you, if you can reuse those, that's fantastic. Yeah, reuse yeah. things, and I, I yeah. mean that's like a that's like at the height of the pyramid, you know, being able to reuse. Well, like you mentioned, with the, the biodegradable, yeah, yeah. you go on the beach and. The plastic is that big, you know, yeah. it's impossible. So, I mean, that's, yeah, we, we did look at it and, um, you know, for us, no, if we can incentivize it, yeah. get a schooner, how we pack tax, I mean, we'll be bloody... <laughs> 
Todd will be bringing his stack in. I know that. I'm telling you now, this is, and this is why we often say, uh, get the crew together, the ladies, the gents, have a couple of beers, and this is where you literally can have a conversation and solve the problems of the world. This 100%. is the place to do it. 100%. Please come and have a beer with us soon here at Your Mates Brewing Co. Uh, technology Drive, Warana. Let's put the plug in there. Because uh, you know what? Come and have a beer here. We're doing sustainable stuff, doing incredible things, and Mother Earth will love you for it. And that's like beer for charity. Don't you boys think? Is that a fair call? Hundred dollar voucher winner is going to our friend Natalie Tink, uh, the Tinkinator. Natalie Tink from Ray White in Maroochydore. Thanks for getting involved. Thanks for putting the hashtag on, and uh, and thanks for joining in the conversation. Conversation number two as we talk about crafting a circular economy. We're pretty much done and dusted. Next month we're heading up the range, everybody, to Brewhaha Brewery in uh, in Mullaney. So uh, Matt and the guys will be having us there. Different Matt. That's the other thing. Not only do you have to have a good beer to be a brewer but you have to be called Matt at least one in the business at least one yeah we'll Chris. Chris. or Chris yeah we've got two we've got a Matt and we've got a Chris yeah uh, Matt and a Chris and you're Chris for short so um, we'd love you to come and join us again everybody that date of course in a month's time will be Wednesday the 19th of August so do you think Carlos will we be allowed to have a few people in the brewery then do you think or are we there's a thing he's not sure because that'd be good to have a bit of a, a live crew as well. We've got a great audience in tonight for Mexican Wednesday here at Your Mates. A bit of Larry Pale Ale, a bit of Eddie the XPA, uh, a bit of Sally IPA and some Sangria, which you're not brewing, obviously, mate. It's just something they're throwing together. Something special. Bernie Craven, Waste Free Systems, thank you so much for being with us on the couch and in our conversation tonight, mate. Look forward to doing heaps more stuff with you. We know, we know there's a lot going on for you on the Sunshine Coast and we've told people how to get a hold of you. Waste Free Systems. Systems on the uh, on the internet. Google's amazing, as we said. <laughs> I mean, I'm impressed with technology and the 3D stuff and that, but I won't be truly impressed until you can get online and download a beer. I think that could be the next thing, boys. <laughs> yep. Matty Hepburn and Kristen McGarry are the legends who put together Your Mates Brewing. Congratulations on your success and, in particular, your engagement in the community, boys. W- what's next? In 30 seconds, tell me what's happening next. Um, I mean, we want to. I don't know, we just need to brew more beer. McGarry needs to get off his bum, <laughs> brew some more beer, because I'm sick of him coming up with excuses. No, we, we've, got some, we've got some cool initiatives. Um, f- first and forefront, we really do want to spread the message though. I mean, and thank you Sunshine Coast Council, thanks Todd. I think this is a, an important conversation. I think um, it's something that we, as a business, really want to drive. Um, but for us, just spread the good times, I think, and spread, uh, spread the message, sustainability. We want to look after each other and we want to look after this beautiful place that we live in. Um, and, and we have a responsibility to do that. You know, we've got 30 staff and an amazing amount of, of, of supporters in our community. And we want to set a good example and we want to um, lead by example. Mm. Absolutely. We can't wait to see you up the beach, everybody. Very important hashtag, uh, of course, is Circular Shift SC. Let's get that going. So if you're doing some stuff, you're posting on Insta or whatevs. Uh, I just sound like a young kid. Like, <laughs> Guess totes and moats, whatevs, if you're posting. Uh, hashtag Circular Shift SC. Can't wait to see you in a month's time, everybody. Wednesday, the 19th of August. As I say, we'll be in Mullaney at Brouhaha Local Brewery. Thanks very much to all of you boys for joining us tonight. Thank you. To White House Celebrations, uh, to the Sunshine Coast Business Women's Network work as well and to our buddies at Sunshine Coast Council to you guys for having us here at your mates and to Carlos and the family thank you Carlos he's off camera he's terribly dreamy really is happy Wednesday everybody thanks for joining us for date night on the couch we'll see you in a month's time 